to my YouTube channel. My name is Chidima Osigwe. And on today's episode, I have Olalekon Lawal. Olalekon is a big four consultant who recently relocated from Lagos, Nigeria to Dublin Island. Lekon, how does it feel to be a big four consultant in Dublin? Well, um, first off, thank you for having me on your channel, and I must say it's it's a it's a good feeling. But um, <laughs> when I received the offer, obviously there was a rush of emotions, and I was quite pumped. But the process took so long that <laughs> when it was time to get when it was time to make the move, eventually. Um, I was feeling normal because people were asking me, how are you feeling? So how are you feeling? You're living in Nigeria, how are you feeling? I was just like, normal, normal. <laughs> uh, but then I think at the point my family left me and when I was now left with the immigration guys, at that point I noticed uh, tears were dropping little by little, but then I just had to form that guy, that guy. And now I left Nigeria on a Saturday. I got here on a Sunday afternoon. On getting to the apartment that was booked for me by the firm, I noticed, um, okay, I actually met my work tools. Yeah, my workstation was already waiting for me, like laptop, everything. And I was like, ah, you guys don't even allow me to calm down. Because <laughs> I was to resume the next day, which was a Monday. Oh. But then, yeah, so the fact that I had to resume the next day, I think there was no breathing space for me to feel any kind of emotions. Yeah, I just knew, okay, I need, I need to just come hit the ground running and get everything up and running so at first when i got the offer yes i was feeling anyhow a normal person would feel when you get the, uh, an offer for a foreign job but when it was time to move i was just feeling normal yeah you mentioned that the process took long how long uh so i think my process took let me see um, about seven to eight months oh, yeah wow. seven to yeah that's like a year that's 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 really like a year okay so <laughs> they they had sent you congratulations you have gotten the job yeah oh and then you now started working towards traveling yeah so the longest what actually took um time was the employment permits processing because yeah coming to a foreign current country you need a work permit either i call it employment permit or a work permit and I was coming on a critical skills employment permit. So they would the firm would actually apply on my behalf to the government. And it was now the it was now the function of the government to process it. I I was I was I was informed that it was going to take 13 to 14 weeks. That, that was because they had backlogs from due to COVID. You know, 2020 was like was like grounded or something. There was really no there was, there was really no 2020 from I think early March. So they had backlogs and things, it altered um, operations. So things were quite slow then. So I, I, I had to bear the bronze because from the moment they applied for work permit, they applied for work permit around October, mid-October. And my work permit didn't come out till Feb, 2nd of February. So you can imagine how, yeah, you can imagine how, what would have been going through my mind of like, I also, I also, I wasn't worried because I, there was a way, there was there's a website where you can track it. So I'll be like, you guys should be fast, you guys should be fast. What's going on? But then, once work permit came out, the next thing was to apply for visa, and visa took three weeks. Visa took three weeks, like 21 days. So that was, I think that was pretty fast. So prior to the COVID, I'm sure the work permit would have taken six to eight weeks, which is quite fair enough. So all in all, it should have been three months. But then my own spanned through uh, was it seven or eight months thereabouts so say covid affected in a way yeah so would, would so would you say that this thing that we say in nigeria runs it would you say that would have sufficed at any point or it was impossible to even use the word wrong <laughs> so there, there was a point there was a time i felt ah i trust nigeria say we could all run some because it was it was it was getting so annoying and frustrating that like it couldn't come so quickly it couldn't come so quickly yeah but i mean you you couldn't run it because it was with the government 
and things had to follow due process. It was definitely going to come out still, but it just took time. So they when even when I touched base with the firm, like guys, what's what's up now? What's going on with this thing? They'll be like, Yeah, that's that's the only frustrating part that we are at the hands of the government. We are the government's back and call, so we just have to calm down. We can't do nothing. So I mean, I had no choice than to calm down and just wait till everything gets sorted. So all in all, you just have to wait for government. You know if you run some like thing, which was painful. <laughs> which was quite painful though. It was quite painful. Okay. So um when you moved, at least you've you've spent you've spent a while there. When you moved, can you um mention three occasions when you did something and you said, guy, I just fooled myself. <laughs> I just food myself. Ah, oh, okay. So I think I've spent just three weeks here. Okay. Have I food myself? Mm, not really. Not really. I don't so you think just so. relax, watch, and see how people are doing it, and then go ahead. Yeah. So do, the thing is, I just find some things absurd here because okay. when we talk about opening bank accounts, like they are super slow. I trust my GTB and my access bank people for roadside. They could not open an account for you. Sharp, sharp. <laughs> So opening opening bank accounts here yeah, is is pretty frustrating because at the moment I I think I'll just get sorted next week. So it's annoying. Another thing is, okay, you know in Nigeria now, when we want to cross, you look left, look right, look left again. Sometimes you just quickly doing it. Yeah, yeah. The thing I just find out well, there's a, there's traffic life for pedestrians. I'm like, ah, for Nigeria we we'll say. Oh, <laughs> So it's it, it actually, that's one of the things I just find out. It, it's actually good because they are they are actually organized for sometimes. You just like, you enjoy that chaos, the chaos that, that Lagos brings. You just want to feel that chaos. Like, I'm not even following this traffic light. I want to cross all this kind of thing that I don't. So, I want to cross the express road. Just cross the express. Like, <laughs> and car will be coming, you, you like, run. So, it doesn't just apply to only me coming because you even see okay. people that are there. So why do I be like they don't even respect this thing? They, they would just run be like ah, shit, like this person is in a hurry or something. <laughs> so it's, it's just crazy everywhere. Okay, all right, that's nice. How would you um? Can you share your experience with working in a big four in Nigeria and working in a big four in uh, Dublin? Is it the same thing? Do you consider? Uh, which one would you prefer if you if you are given an opportunity obviously you already have an opportunity and you have chosen but at least yeah. by the time you chose you had not experienced the other side now that you're experiencing the other side yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what would you which one would you prefer if you're given an opportunity to choose right I've, obviously no prizes for guessing i'll definitely choose <laughs> i'll definitely choose the foreign before and okay so the thing is, of the truth, um, I'm definitely grateful for my background, having had the opportunity to work in um, a big four firm in Nigeria, because I would say it definitely preps you up for whatever challenge you face anywhere. It's just like the Nigerian, normal Nigerian setting that anything you face in Nigeria, if you can cope in Nigeria, then it's almost certain that you'll be able to cope anywhere. I've not been to places in the world, though, but I just feel that um, coping, you know, as Nigerians, we have this coping mechanism in us. Sure. sure. Yeah. So, our idea of it is okay. It's when I just go here, yeah, I saw that okay, they have the. Um, I think there's a particular day in May, and they pick um, or maybe the month of May is for well-being or mental health. Oh, wow. Imagine wow. mental health. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I so we're speaking. Uh, my colleague of mine was telling me about someone that committed suicide. I'm like, wow. I said back home in Nigeria, it's very, very rare for you to hear of suicide because of work pressure and the likes, because we know, we learn to deal with stuff like this. So the idea of work pressure in Nigeria is quite different here. In Nigeria, you can be on five, six, seven engagements at the same time, different projects, and they are running concurrently. Why here, the highest you can be on is two. And maybe one is facing out. You're almost done with one. Maybe at the reporting stage of one, and another one is just commencing. So that's Stop when pressure. Have... So, so to them, to them, to them, I feel they, they, from what I've garnered from them so far, to them it's pressure. 
but from where I'm coming from, a normal thing. That's no pressure <laughs> so, at all. So I think if you can cope in big for Nigeria, definitely there are some units too that, of course, if you are if you are reviewing if you are doing audits, external audits, everywhere, whether in Nigeria or outside or outside Nigeria, definitely there's pressure. The deadline is thin, but if you can cope in the Nigerian setting, I think you are pretty much set up to cope very very well in in a foreign foreign firm setting. That's that's what I believe and that's what I think from my perspective. Wow. What what's closing hour like? So um, business starts the day starts uh, nine a.m. Mm-hmm. and we close five fifteen. 5 15 pm i think you have one hour break also but sometimes you might just use 30 minutes depending on what you want to get or something and the setting is such a way that once it's 5 15 if you feel no not even if you feel i think if you want to stand and leave you are free to leave sometimes you can even leave for you can even leave before five so long you are going to just complete the remaining hour maybe at home or anything or you have an understanding with your manager you can leave your manager out in the office well, like compared to when, when we're in before Nigeria. Your manager will be in the office and you would leave. Ah, oh, definitely, definitely. It happens your manager, your director. You can tell them bye. See you tomorrow. You will not be in tomorrow. Maybe you'll be working remotely. Compared to sure. Nigeria, that, compared <laughs> to before that, we have to sneak out. Yeah, you soup if you are going. A friend so, of mine was sharing, right? He actually yeah. works in, a, um, in one of the big fours in Nigeria. He said sometimes when he wants to go home, he would have passed his bag to yeah. a junior staff. That person would take it downstairs and then he would just troll out as if he's not going home. Where are you going to? I want to quickly get something and he's <laughs> on his way home. <laughs> have you ever done something like that at any point? So no, for now, I haven't had... So maybe maybe I'm still being welcomed into the team, but I still I want to hold that belief that I Nigeria is already somewhere that you've learned how to cope with different things. So I'll definitely face challenges here, and definitely are challenges here. But waiting, we don't see back home. I don't think you can compare. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think I can compare. So def, yeah, so yeah, you also get another thing is you get. People respect your time a whole lot. People respect your time a whole lot because I noticed something there, like this. Okay, you can check people that have logged off from work, and when they log off from work, they log off from work. When they say see you on Monday, we'll continue on Monday. That's it. Nothing like, okay, I should get it on Saturday. I should get it on Sunday. So I'm actually being careful because I actually have, I, I I'll, be, I'll be working with some juniors, so I try as much as possible to also. Make sure I refrain myself, respect their time. Um, if you have, we had the Good Friday, the long weekend, Good Friday, Easter Monday break. So I was careful enough not to say, we will work on it over the weekend. Even if me, I can go through it over the weekend. I can't say we. It is my personal problem. Just take it. It is what we are used to, what I am used to back from Nigeria. So I don't, I have to learn as much as possible to respect people's time. So that's, that's it. Okay, still speaking on um, work environment, um, work conditions, and all of that. By the time yeah. you, by the time you got to uh, Dublin, was there um, any form of disrespect from your boss, maybe a superior colleague, or everybody just respects everybody automatically? No racism, nothing like this guy just coming in from Nigeria and came to take our job, nothing like that. Okay, so I think um, from what I've garnered so far, um, the 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 house, like um, when it comes to the work environment, the people there, they are they are they are very cool because definitely the, the company promotes um, diversion, happy diversity, inclusion, diversity, and the likes. Yeah, but but when you are talking about generally, like the country as a whole or something, I don't know if it's something. I don't know if it's um, you can you can reduce racism to the barest minimum, but when it comes to the work environment, people have had, people have related with so far. They've been so supportive, trying to look out for me. Okay, um, so they, they they most of them find it difficult to pronounce my name Ola Lekon, so they just shut it. To, I just say okay, you can just call me Ola. They be like oh Ola, I'm like mm-hmm. 
just I just take it that way. So um they try as much as well, okay. Have you have you gotten your bank account settled? Have you done this? Do you have cash? And they are so so friendly, uh, which is quite good. So it's more like um a home in, in the office environment. So so far it's been going on well. Um, I hear people say, hey, don't travel. Nigeria is better. You get to pay a lot of taxes, blah, 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 blah. What do you have to say about that? Oh, definitely. I think, uh, well, not like we don't pay tax in Nigeria. We obviously pay tax, but maybe we're not just um, uh, so conscious about it because definitely we get taxed in Nigeria too. Yeah. I think even if you get taxed here, yeah, yeah, you get taxed here. Yeah. And sometimes it baffles me because, for instance, say someone is earning a hundred thousand uh, pounds or euros per annum, and someone is earning, say, half of that, like 50,000 euros or, or pounds per annum too, their monthly take home wouldn't, be, wouldn't reflect the kind of gap you have when you have that hundred thousand to fifty thousand pounds so the monthly take home will not really be so so massive the way it is massive when you put it in thousands in, in hundreds of thousands here yeah. but i mean you get to see um your money's worth like the the, the worth of what you pay the tax value you pay for money yeah the value for money the value for the tax you pay so you, you get to enjoy it so i mean it's you chose to leave your country so <laughs> You, be, you can't always have things go your way. So if, if, if you actually feel the tax in your own country is better. So stay there. Stay there. <laughs> That's it. So if you had the opportunity to run away again, are you still going to run away? Well, so I didn't run away. I just relocated. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to use the word run away. <laughs> you mean <You're>, Japa? <laughs> exactly. I, I was waiting for you to say it by yourself. I did disappoint me. <laughs> so yeah, because obviously that's the term that people are using, uh, people yeah. use in yeah. recent time. So if I have the opportunity again, uh, most definitely I will. <laughs> I will Our leaders def- of tomorrow are running the way. We're having knowledge flights. Yeah, I said it's yeah, definitely we're having brain drain. Yeah. We're having brain drain in Nigeria and other people. Other people um, will definitely take up the this thing, the mantle from where we stopped. So, so we are creating space for those that are coming behind. <laughs> okay, so what what are the basic things that anybody relocating from Big Four Nigeria to Big Four Dublin Island should take note of and prepare for? Or anywhere. Or anywhere, yes, anywhere. I want uh, to streamline it, but let's just do anyway. Okay, so when you are relocating, I think for someone relocating for the purpose of work is different from someone relocating for the purpose of uh, education or something, as it were. Definitely, if you are lo- locating for the purpose of work, you are pretty much um, settled, you are pretty much comfortable. You won't really face so many things that someone is relocating for. The purpose of studies is um, you you you've crossed so many others than someone who is located. That's just the harsh reality, because um, you have so many things settled. So if you are in terms of preparing, right? In yes. terms of preparing, preparing. Ah, uh, pretty much you don't need, but you don't need any, you don't need much. So it depends on the country. Like Ireland, for instance. Uh, you you just need to spend some money on some things talk about flight tickets um applying for visa and yeah everything around your flight talk about your travel insurance and your visa i think that's bulk of the money you spend on for people going to uk and the likes i think uk you have to spend money on um, health insurance that's if you don't have an agreement with the company you are going to work with um, to on how to pay, maybe you pay and they will reimburse you as part of your relocation allowance or the likes. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Flight, you spend money around your visa appointments, um, getting the visa, and also booking your flights too. So that's I that's I level. You won't really need proof of funds as against when you are going for studies that you do the same thing that someone who is going to um, work is going is going to do. 
then you now go the extra mile again by doing proof of funds and the likes getting paying for your school fees and the likes too so it is pretty much straightforward and less you face less assholes compared to someone who will go for um study. purpose of study yeah that's so, just it so you would advise that going as a professional is better than uh, going as a student so on the surface of it it looks easy to say but truth is neither is easy either going as a student or going as a, a professional because going as a professional definitely is competition why should they select you because they have i'm sure they have a million and one people applying for the same role from different countries even more qualified than you are too so mm. i mean it's just it's just the consistency in applying the tenacity is normal you receive breakfast you will receive breakfast in application if not just application too because there are so, there are so many times i applied for jobs and and you apply for a job in less than two hours you receive regrets meal breakfast you'll be like okay normal 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 we move, we move. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's not so the, it got to the point that um breakfast was was now something normal to me i mean but then that that, that goes to show that there's a whole lot behind behind it because before there was a point I was even begging for just one interview. I was like, if I could just get hold of one interview, like I just needed an interview. Because you apply for a job, then you might not even get a chance to let them even hear you out. Let them, let them hear what, they, what you have to say, what you have to offer. And they, they send you regret mail. So I was even begging for an interview at some point, like, God, I just need an interview. Like, even if it's just one, I just need one and I'm going to grab it by the scruff of the neck. So this was this 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 um of this job i'm currently on was actually my first um was my first ever foreign interview oh, wow congratulations uh, thanks so, much. so that was my first ever foreign interview and it was like something i already begged for like i was so so anxious and i was an- anticipating so when i got it i i had to consult people that had done it before especially people that had done i, I have a friend Alonso, talk about. so he had done for UK. He's currently in the UK too. So it was one that prepped me. Funny thing was, I had done so many interviews with Nigerian firms then. So I, I had this feeling I was quite comfortable with running interviews, going through interviews, the kind of questions I'll be faced with, whether technical or behavioral. So I was quite comfortable. So when this my friend Alonso was preparing for his own UK interview. He came to meet me, so I, we're doing dry runs, we're doing the drills together. We would, sometimes we just take walk along the street and we'll be like, okay, adjust this one, say this one. I feel this one is okay like this. And that was how we were doing the interview. Demo runs, we're doing demo. When it was time for me to do my own too, I had to call on him and he gave me time to come to his house. I think it took me for one hour, 30 minutes. We did like a dry run. We answered like 20, like, oh, I think 30 questions. Let me just cap it at 30 questions. And the day he took me those questions, I will not forget, it was a Monday evening, I think July 12th, yeah, July 12th. He took me on a demo on how to answer different questions. Ever since then, I think that night when he took me, in, like even in my sleep, in my dream, I had an interview for a, on a Wednesday, for Wednesday. Even in my sleep, I'll be revising that, okay, you say this one, okay, you will not say this, this. Come interview day, I was able to, I was able to do well in that interview then. I had two interviews. First, okay, when I did the interview, I had I, I met with the managers, the senior manager and the manager, two of them, uh, two women, lovely women. Definitely, I enjoy when women interview me, just the way you're interviewing now. <laughs> so then I was scheduled for a final interview with the director for the next week, the coming week. Uh, that, also, that also went well. So I think at the end of my interview, there's the way you feel if you actually did it. If the interview went well, you feel um, pretty much good or satisfied with yourself. So I think I just left that interview. I was I was feeling good, but I was hopeful because that was the last this thing. That was the last stage, and I was, the next thing I was just waiting for. Please just make me an offer. Just make me an offer. <laughs> But then the 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 wait took long. It took long over a month. Yeah, like a month and a half. So imagine 
imagine I did first interview like on a Wednesday. The next week, Thursday, they said they wanted to do final interview. I was like, ah, so quick. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> then, oh, yeah, after finishing the final interview. So, guys, how did that perform? What are you saying? Then it all took a, over a month. Like, the wait was so long. And I was I was following up, like, I was constantly following up, like, I was chatting with, I was chatting with the recruiter on LinkedIn. Yeah, so that's one other thing. I During that process, I had to optimize my LinkedIn usage. Okay. So when I say optimize, I actually mean um, I had to connect with meaningful people, like people that could help my life, people that could help my career. You co- I had to connect with different people within the company, within the firm, also with, with different recruiters too within the firm. Uh, even before interviews too, because you need to ask some questions. Like you chat up different people, some will answer, some will not re- respond. Maybe because obviously people are busy, and sometimes people don't. People, LinkedIn is not where LinkedIn is not like WhatsApp or maybe any other social media platform that people are very used to. So from there, I had to. I, I actually made, uh, let's say, a friend that was quite, quite um, helpful, very, very helpful, super helpful. She's Zimbabwean. I've, I've actually met her once now since I came here and she she, she took me out for ice cream and... You and the ladies! <laughs> we, went to, we went to an African restaurant, yeah. So, okay. it's it's something that you have to optimize your LinkedIn when you when you want to apply for foreign jobs. That's 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 a given. Because you need to connect you need to connect with people that have been, been through the same process that you want to embark on or, yeah, structure your profile the way they did has to because definitely it must have worked for them that's that's it so i was chatting with the recruiter and she actually gave me the news on over linkedin that i was like i messaged that it was a monday morning i messaged that around 10 a.m like what's up um any updates so she, she now responded like one hour or two hours after i was like oh, yeah the business actually reviewed this thing blah 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 and they would like you to make you an offer my god when I do like when I saw that message, they would like to make you an offer. I think I, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I stay, I stay, uh, I stay, um, one in one, in one story, in one story building. So I stay upstairs. I think I just came outside, like I just shouted. <laughs> there was nobody at the for I was the only one at home that period. I just started running on the street. I came outside again. I ran. To, I was on the street. Whoa. I saw one of my guy. I just jumped on me. I said, "Guy, a guy." That's it. That's it. You don't click. You don't click. You know, like, <laughs> so, <laughs> it was actually, it was actually crazy. Then, so that was I said. Then, then I, I could feel the emotions. Then, before the whole process thing now drained me, dragged and dragged. <laughs> so that was when I now left. When I was now finally leaving the country, I the emotions were not like it's be as if uh, immediately you got the offer. Yeah, let's start fucking. That's when you now be like you be feeling different kind of emotions. Are you missing him? Yeah, I'm going to new country. So, so it was it was actually quite fun. So it definitely does a tip that you need to optimize your LinkedIn profile. And again, it's it's not it's not it's it's a do or die affair if you want to tell me that way. Because at that point, I noticed my Saturdays, my weekend, my Saturdays were no longer for anything other than applying for jobs. Like I'll just wake up, I'll just type different consulting firms, UK. And I'll go to because I'm 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 focused in the internal audit space. I'll look for internal audit jobs in that particular consulting, like different this thing. So before before you look for vacancies, even before you apply for three jobs, it might look easy. Damn, it's stressful. Like the day has gone. Like the day has gone. You'll be like, wow. So it's just only three jobs I've applied for. So I could not even take count. I apply for numerous jobs, numerous breakfast where they like breakfast. So it got to a point that after then, I got the hang of it. Then I'll message some people, I'll message some partners in on LinkedIn, some senior managers that I so 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 my name is Olali Kong. I'm a I'm a blah blah blah. I have four years so so years experience. Uh and I at the end of the day, I'm excellent at what I do. What I do, I'll now attach my CV. What's the end point? I'm begging you. I beg. <laughs> Just interview me. That was that. I'm pleading. I'm, ple- <laughs> I'm, I'm not proud. So that's the end point. So I did a whole lot of that. Um, did a whole lot of applications. Like it got to a point I noticed that I, I just evaluated myself. That yeah, you've dropped some things that I used to do. Like 
Saturdays before, I was so conscious about football because Saturday is football. But I now notice that it had taken a toll on me. It had taken that football aspect away from me. Like, wait, so you're not really you're not really concerned about football again. It was after I now got it. Yeah, and I started coming down on Saturday. Like, yeah, Saturdays actually for oh, football. <laughs> you watch football in the afternoon. Now. That's the normal thing. Like, but before Next life. before me, during the application period, it was ser- it's serious business. It's really serious business. It's really, really serious business. So that's it. You, you might just see the end point and it looks all glamorous, but there's a whole lot of work behind it. So the same thing too, when you want to relocate with even studies too, I know there's a whole lot of work behind it. Same thing with relocating because of um, additional, there's a whole lot of work behind it. At the end of the day, people just see the beautiful aspects. They see the picture on the streets of, uh, or the streets of Europe, where you are, wherever you are. Uh, they think it's all that glamorous. No, the kind of pain that you also felt, the kind of breakfast that you have been served. Like I've had, um, the, I've even had, I've even had um, feedbacks, feedback from an interview. I was like, ah, so it was this particular line I used that messed me up. Since then, I stopped using that particular line. That I was like, okay, yeah. So I took that feedback. They sent me breakfast with the feedback. It's like three cost, two cost meal. Feedback and breakfast. Take out. I took it. I had the breakfast. I took the um, the appetizer. I just shake body. I was like, okay, yeah. So going for um, going on, it was something that worked really well. And it's not just limited to Europe. I know plenty of people go to UK. So Ireland, I think Ireland now. Ireland. I'm just knowing people that are moving to Ireland for work. If if you want to try the Middle East too, because I had interviews too with companies, with consulting firms too in Dubai. I know people have, I know someone that has gone to Qatar. So you can also try that if you fancy that. Of course, if you go to Qatar, especially in this particular point, you get to watch the World Cup for free, even though Nigeria did not qualify. I mean, it's something that is not just limited to you. And I know people that have started going to the US too. US is already opening up in terms of work and also Australia. So Australia, USA, can, um, okay, I don't know, Canada, you have to do PR or something. UK. So another thing to look out for in the jobs, you have to look out for um, this particular line. If, is it available for visa sponsorship? Yeah. So if it's available for visa sponsorship, definitely you have a chance to apply. But if it's not available for visa sponsorship and you apply for the job, auto breakfast, confirm, legitimately, legitimately, it will drop in your inbox. The breakfast will drop. Like, so it's, it's true that the breakfast, so you just have to watch out for if it's available for visa sponsorship. And it's not just consulting firms. So I think so many tech firms now, foreign tech firms too, they do something like that. They, they are, their jobs are available for visa sponsorship. So people can actually um, people can actually look up in that. If you are in the tech space too, definitely do. In fact, I think tech guys actually prefer um, is it remote working. Yeah. Or if you actually want to move, I know people people move to Germany, Canada, US, UK, anywhere in Europe. I mean, it's something that people can also really look into. So that's it. Thank you so much for your time, Olalekon. Thank you so much for sitting with me on this episode and sharing a lot, a lot. You've really shared a lot. And I'm sure that viewers will be in your inbox after this particular episode drops. I hope you'll be open to consulting for them because I'm telling them in advance that once they come to your DM, they should be ready to pay some cash because now time is money. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, uh, no problem, no problem at all. Um, so any you'll be questions open to after helping? Yeah, yeah, right? definitely, definitely. All right, definitely. thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for do having have me. a very nice, I don't want to say do have a very nice evening because I don't know when this video is going to drop. Do have a very nice <laughs> day. <laughs> Take you care too. of yourself. Enjoy your stay in Dublin, Ireland. I will. Take thank care. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.